humans have changed the face of the world. And while the paving over of cities is the most noticeable, it may be that the ploughing under of our countryside is the most consequential, especially to bees. Historically, the British countryside has been good for wildlife, including having many flowers to provide pollen and nectar for bees. But particularly since World War II, the countryside is no longer as wildlife friendly as it used to be. In recent decades, there's been a great deal of interest in helping wildlife by mitigating the effects of these man-made changes to the rural landscape. For example, in Britain and Europe, we have agri-environment schemes which aim to improve the rural landscape health. Have these schemes been effective at improving the landscape for bees? In a new study from the University of Sussex, researchers allowed the honeybee, an organism that itself may benefit from a healthy rural environment, to evaluate not only that landscape, but also some of these efforts to make the land more wildlife friendly. Honeybees are important pollinators for crops and wildflowers, and are in decline from many factors, including lack of available forage in the landscape. The honeybees possess great potential for monitoring the landscape for flowers. One reason is because they forage at long distances, so in our study the bees from a single location could survey an area of 100 kilometers squared. But even more importantly is that honeybees possess a unique behavior, the waggle dance. In the dance, a returning forager communicates the distance and direction from the hive to where she collected the nectar or pollen. Only foragers working the most profitable patches make dances, so dance decoding tells us where the best sites are. We eavesdrop on these communications to determine where the bees are collecting their food. The bees were housed in observation hives, which let the researchers observe and film the dancers. The university campus is in the countryside, but only one kilometre from the city of Brighton, giving the bees access to urban and rural areas. The foraging bees could leave the hive through tubes that connected the observation hives to the outside. Dancers were decoded by hand from the videos, each direction and distance carefully extracted and analysed. In all, the researchers decoded 5,484 dancers from two complete foraging years. The dancers were then plotted on maps. The honeybee is not a very precise dancer, and both the direction as well as the distance component in the dance contain errors. We handle these errors by plotting the dance not as a point on a map, but as a cloud of probabilities. We can then look at all the dances combined, and we can see where the bees cast their votes. First, we divided the landscape into 60 blocks. Then we determined which of these blocks were most visited. Here, the numbers indicate the rank of the block for honeybee foraging. The researchers found that the most visited block, shown here as the number one, is located about two kilometres southeast from the lab. This block contains Castle Hill, a rural land nature reserve. Castle Hill is one of the finest examples in the country of an ancient, wildlife-rich chalk grassland site. The reserve is also well known as a good place for butterflies. Next, the researchers divided up the landscape into seven broad categories of land type. Urban, rural lands, and then rural lands under one of five levels of agri-environment schemes. They found that, out of these seven categories, rural land areas under higher level stewardship received the most foraging. Agri-environment schemes are required for all EU member states, and their price tag of more than 41 billion euros in two decades is substantial. And yet surprisingly, there are very few studies evaluating how helpful the different schemes are to wildlife. By using three glass-walled observation beehives, we're able to survey 94 square kilometres of the countryside. This would have been impossible to have done in any other way. The honeybee is only one species, but where honeybees forage, so do many other species of insect, including bumblebees, wild bees and butterflies. The honeybee is the only animal that can tell you where it's collected its food. And here we have shown that listening to the bees may give us information that's relevant in helping them, such as knowing where they've gone to get their food. This makes the waggle dance more than just a honeybee behavior. It's a powerful tool for ecology and conservation that may give us unique guidance to help sustain a more wildlife-friendly world.